candidate, Senator Panfilo Ping Lakson. Let's also welcome businessman Faisal Mangondato. At this point, We'd be welcoming on stage former Senator Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., but he has declined our invitation. We will leave his podium here on stage. Our next candidate, Dr. Jose Montemayor Jr. is our next candidate, Senator Manny Pacquiao. And finally, Vice President Lenny Robredo. candidates and welcome. It has become customary for candidates, particularly for president and vice president, to engage in a debate. It is a structured argument which requires rules, among them limits on speaking time to ensure fairness. Sa madaling salita sa debate, walang forever. Each candidate will be given a minute and 30 or 90 seconds, 90 seconds, to answer general and specific questions. A general question will be answered by all. Candidates can interact through a rebuttal. For that, we'll give you each one minute to speak. Pero candidates, pakiusap lamang. Don't interrupt, please, when someone is speaking. Alang-alang po yan sa ating audience, sa ating mga kapwa Pilipino na gusto pong malaman ang inyong mga plano para sa ating bayan. Here's the thing. We will turn off your microphones when you interrupt to allow the person speaking to finish within the allotted time. Pag sumingit po kayo, papatayin ang agad ang mikropono ninyo. There are monitors in front of you to help you keep track of the time. You will hear this sound to signal you have 10 seconds left. You will also hear this bell or this sound to indicate your time is up. We also have provided you with a whiteboard and marker. They are behind you. We have a few questions that will require you to write down your answers. And last, we'd like you to know there will be questions that will be answered only via a show of hands. Now that we're clear on the rules of our debate, let's proceed with our first question. At the beginning of President Rodrigo Duterte's term in 2016, he said he will not condone corruption. In his last State of the Nation address, he said corruption was, quote, endemic in government. Candidates, endemic was the word used by the president, which means corruption is confined and widespread in government. It is a serious problem that we hope the next president will address with results. Here is the general question. Para po sa lahat ng ating kandidato. As a public servant, or a civic leader, has an instance of corruption happened under your watch and how did you deal with it? To give you a few examples, 
Have you or your office been offered a bribe or commission or a kickback? We will have our candidates answer this general question in alphabetical order. Secretary Abelia, you have a minute and a half. Yes. Um, I was about three weeks into my position as a presidential spokesperson when I went to a fast food restaurant and somebody came up to me, a very well dressed man. He said he was a businessman. And he said, uh, and then he made an offer. He said, if you do this for me, I'll do that for you. I was really taken aback. But, uh, and he asked for my number. I did not give my number, so that was it. But basically, it was it. It was the first time I was, uh, I was confronted by the situation. It is a serious problem. Ang susunod po, si Caliodi de Guzman. Uh, pasensya na kayo. Hindi ako naging opisyal ng gobyerno, kaya wala nag-alok sa akin. At kung meron mga mag-alok sa akin, sigurado i -re reject ko. Pero sa hanay namin, walang ganyang kaso. Kaya hindi namin pa, uh, nang, hindi nangyayari sa aming hana yung ganyang mga uh, suhulan. At hindi namin papayagan ang ganyang klase ng mga pagsusuhol pag, uh, dito sa aming hanay. Dahil hindi yan makakatulong para sa pagpapaunlad ng ating ng organisasyon, ng aming samahan. Kaya dapat siya nire-reject. So, Kalo, Kalo, di para lang klaro kung mahalal kayong bilang Pangulo. Ano po yung gagawin ninyo kapag uh, na-offeran po kayo? Uh, ma makukulong yung mag-o-offer sa akin. Sa so, kayo mismo, mag-aaresto? Makukulong yung mag-o-offer sa akin. Kaya huwag niyong gagawin. <laughs> Salamat po. Ang uh, susunod po ay si Yorme. Mayor Isko. 90 seconds. 30, 40 years problema ng recto simula Asuncion hanggang Abad Santos along recto. Hindi marisolba. And then... I became mayor. Salamat sa mga taga Maynila. Binigyan nila ako ng pagkakataon. Gone in 48 hours. Somebody tried and offered. Nagpahatid. 5 million a day. But awa naman ng Diyos, tatlong taon na, hindi pa sila nakababalik. Yes, it's true. We, they will try. They will approach. But depende naman yan, kung talagang gusto mo mag sa gobyerno, kayang gawin yung imposible maging posible. Pangalawa, in the case of City of Manila as a government, we adapted to technology as like what my professor said. The only way to solve corruption is to limit human discretion in government transaction. And yes, we did. That's why we have GoManila.com. Awa naman ng Diyos, tumaas ang income ng Manila, naging episyente ang koleksyon, wala nang discretion halos, hindi perfecto, Pero unti-unti, naturally, namamatay ang korupsyon sa City Hall. And that can be done in the entire country from Mindanao, Visayas, and Luzon. Thank you, Your Mayor. Secretary Gonzalez, sir. Uh, hindi ko maipaliwanag, pero sa hinapahaba ng aking uh, paglilingkot sa gobyerno, walang nagtangka na mag-offer sa akin anything. Hindi ko alam kung bakit. At uh, ngayon naman, Kung tayo ay mapopwesto at titignan natin ang tungkol sa corruption, may uh, nakapagsabi sa akin na bago natin tignan ang sotulari ng corruption, ay eh, intindihin muna natin whether there is corruption in our systems or corruption has become the system in the country. Ako naniniwala na para bang naging sistema na ang corruption sa atin. Kaya kung sakasakali, pag-aaralan natin ang uh, corruption as a systemic problem. Senator Ping. Salamat. Ang isang talaga may pagmamalaki ko sa aking uh, serbisyo publiko, niminsan hindi ako tumanggap ng suhol kapalit ng serbisyo publiko. Maging ang pabuya na ino-offer sa amin sa mga nililigtas namin na mga kidnap ransom, kidnap ransom victims ay hindi namin tinatanggap. At ang sinasabi namin, we only did our duty. Ang isang hamon talaga na ito'y maliwanag, very vivid sa akin, nung ako'y maupo bilang provincial director sa lalawigan ng Laguna. No? Siyempre, may huweting doon sa Laguna noong araw, 1992. Uh, ang initial offer, 1.2, inakyat pa ng 1.8, para lang wag gawa, look the other way, ika nga. No? Pinaglabanan ko ito sa unang flag raising ceremony sa provincial headquarters. Ang sabi ko sa aking mga sundalo noon, uh, sa aking mga polis. Ano? Kung ako mabalitaan yung tumanggap 
ng suhol na galing sa illegal na wedding, naandyan yung flagpole, itali nyo ako dyan at barilin nyo ako. Hanggang sa ako'y naging senador, wala akong pork barrel dahil ayoko mapagbintangan kasi nga ang perception, basta may pork barrel, sigurado may komisyon. Para kwentas klaras, hindi ko kinuha ang aking pork barrel at nananatiling malinis ang aking mga kamay pagdating sa korupsyon. Thank you. Senator Ping Lakson, now let's go to Mr. Faisal Mangundato. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, tuwing election, ay palaging nababanggit yung mga corruption sa ating liponan na paulit-ulit, pabalik-balik, na hindi masolusyonan dito sa ating guberno sa anumang sangay ng ating guberno ay nandiriyan ang corruption. Mga kababayan ko dito sa Pilipinas, itong problema sa corruption ay hindi, hindi ito masusolusyonan hanggat nandito pa rin tayo sa lumang sistema. Palaging ito ang problema ng kahirapan dahilan ng kawala ng trabaho dahil kulang ng pundo ang ating guberno dahil napupunta ang nakukurap na salapi na pagmamayari ng sambayan ng Pilipino. Dahil po dito ay isang malaking sakit po sa lipunan ng ating pamahalahan ang korupsyon. Kailangan po tayo ay tumawid na sa bagong sistema upang masolusyonan ang korupsyon dito sa ating gobyerno. Maraming salamat, Dr. Faisal Mangundato. Now let's go to Dr. Jose Montemayor Jr. <clears throat> Magandang hapon po. Uh, hindi lang po ako cardiologist. Ano? Uh, lawyer din ako, criminal lawyer. Uh, meron ba akong karanasan Uh, sa paglaban nito. Opo, ako yung uh, primary lawyer na nag, uh, nagpa-file ng cases sa ombudsman laban sa mga korap sa healthcare. No? Uh, alam nyo, minamaintain ko yan. Uh, kaya nga ako nandito dito para tuparin ko kung ano sinabi sa akin ni Judge Herona. Sabi niya, uh, my student, sabi niya, uh, I want you to cleanse the government of corruption. Kaya nga binigyan ako ng matas na grade nung nasa UST College of Law ako. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, sir. And now let's go to Senator Manny Pacquiao. Maraming salamat po. At uh, alam niyo po, experience ko nung ako ay naging congressman, uh, unang term ko, uh, kung maalala niyo pa yung uh, name na polis, nasa LA po ako nagtitraining, eh, may gusto daw kumausap sa akin. At uh, sinabi ko, sino yung uh, hindi ko siya kilala eh. Sino yung kakausap sa akin? Tapos, bakit ako kakausapin? Tapos sabi niya, ah, ganito, ganyan, ganyan. 70% ibibigay sa'yo. Sabi ko, wag na kami mag-usap, baka masapa ko lang siya. Sabi ko, wag na kami mag-usap. Nung time na yun, and then, from then, nakita ko yung sistema ng ating panggobyerno. Lagi tayo nag-uusap ng korupsyon, 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 korupsyon. Tapos walang pagbabago. Kaya tamakbo ang uh, inyong lingkod sa pagkapangulo dahil gusto kong tapusin ang korupsyon. Gusto kong tapusin ang kanser ng bansa natin na siyang nagpapahirap ng bansa natin at nagpapahirap sa sambay ng Pilipino. Yan ang tanging paraan bago para magkaroon tayo ng tunay na kaginawaan. Maging uh, isang leader na may takot sa Panginoon at hindi materialistic. Kailangan uh, maging totoo tayong lahat. Marami ng eleksyon ang lumipas sa bansa natin. Ang gaganda ng mga pangako ng mga kandidato sa harapan ng tao. And yet, lalo pang dumami ang naghihirap dito sa ating bansa. Masakit isipin na makita ko ang mga kasama ko na nagugutom pa rin kung saan ako nanggaling. Salamat po. And next, Vice President Lenny Robredo. Yung una-una kong ginawa pagkatapos ng ako ay nahalal bilang kongreswoman, kinausap ko yung aking mga taga-distrito, mga negosyante, mga, uh, mga kasama ko sa distrito, sinabi ko, nakaklaruhin natin, walang makikipag-usap sa akin tungkol sa mga kontrata, walang makikipag-usap 
humihingi ng mga favors na bibigyan sila ng um, special special preferences. Yun yung pinakauna. Pangalawa, kaya walang nag-attempt sa akin. Pangalawa, hindi enough for a public official to be good, but there has to be a system which will force him to be good. Kung nung ako ay member ng House of Representatives, yung mga batas na, yung mga panukalang batas na finail ko, lahat anti-corruption measures. Meron measures on transparency. Meron yung full disclosure law, yun yung pinakaunang bill na finail ko. Yung freedom of information law, accountability measures, um, yung people empowerment measures. Dahil palagay ko, eto talaga yung pinakamahalaga para ma mabawasan yung corruption. Six years ako sa Office of the Vice President. And I am very proud to say na in the past three consecutive years, nakukuha naman yung pinakamataas na COA audit rating. Unqualified opinion lagi, pagpapakita na ang resibo na dyan na talagang ayaw namin sa corruption. Maraming salamat din po, Vice President. Alam naman natin that corruption has to end. How you handled an instance of corruption in the past as a public servant will help us understand how you will be able to fight corruption as President of the Philippines. So now, candidates, you have been provided with a whiteboard and marker. Nandyan po sa inyong likod. Pakikuha na po. Because the next question will require you to write down your answer. So, it's still on the topic of corruption. Ito na po ang tanong. Which government agency would your administration investigate first for allegations of corruption? Pwede rin po ang acronyms kung maaari po. Lakihan ang inyong sulat para makita po ng ating mga manonood. When you're done, we are going to ask you to please put up your boards. Wala na pong explanation for this. Gusto lang namin malaman kung anong government agency ang una nyong, yung inyong uunahin. So let's go ahead and... Uh go over their answers kay Secretary Abelia ang sagot po ninyo BOC, Bureau of Customs Customs din kay Calio Dico, Customs din kay Mayor Isko Customs kay Secretary Bert and Bureau of Customs kay Senator Ping Si uh, Mr. Faisal Pakitaas lang po ulit ha, sorry Pakitaas lang po Mr. Faisal Mangondato, IBDC 1 huh? BOC oh, I'm sorry, Bureau. it's BOC also Okay, yan ang unang-una, kaya may number one. Si Dr. Uh, Monte Montemayor, Bureau of Customs also. Senator Pacquiao, kayo po. Ay, isa lang po. Pili kayo ng isa. What is the first one? Department of Health for Senator Manny Pacquiao and for Vice President Lenny Robredo, yung una po. Bureau of Customs as well. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Hello, Bureau of Customs. <laughs> Our next topic will be the COVID-19 pandemic. We're going back to March 16, 2020. That was the day President Duterte placed the entire Luzon under ECQ, Enhanced Community Quarantine. And this will be a very simple, general question to our candidates. Where were you? And what were you doing in the days, weeks, and months that followed the initial lockdown ECQ in Luzon? We'll wait to hear from our candidates after this short break. But and amid this COVID-19 pandemic, we know economic recovery is front and center of every government's forward-looking agenda. Candidates, we'd like to hear specifics about your plans. This is a CNN Philippines special presentation, the Filipino Votes Presidential Debate 2022.